Everybody, welcome to the Saturday live stream. And uh, these are one of those days that I like to actually, I mean, I really like to do these live streams because it's just a lot of good news. And I think uh, people uh, would much rather hear the positivity than the negativity that's going on. And I got to tell you, there is no shortage of that. However, we're going to talk about the spot ETF. We're going to talk about how close we are to approval. We're going to talk about some lies and manipulation. And we're going to talk about the SEC getting caught. So, uh, just to catch everybody up in case uh, they live under a rock, there is a Bitcoin spot ETF and it looks like there's a uh, plethora of different organizations and institutions that are vying for the Bitcoin spot ETF. And so far, no one's been approved. And I've been hearing about it since, since 2017 when I got in. But it looks like things may be changing. And of course, you have these deadlines and the deadlines are going to come and go. And it really just matters until the final deadline themselves. And the final deadline, the final deadline for individuals or for uh, the first institution would be Kathy Wood and ARC 21. And the final deadline will be January 10th for them. They've already gone through. I, I always, I never understood the whole government uh, issue here, but you got a first deadline, a second deadline, a third deadline. Aren't they those deadlines? But uh, that's just how it works. And in January 10th, they're going to take a look at that and they're going to either approve or not. If they deny ARC 21, uh, I don't think they're going to go forward with uh, approving BlackRock and Bitwise and Venac and just leave ARC-21 in, in, in the dust. There'd be a lawsuit there, but hey, I could be wrong. So I personally think that if it's going to be approved, it's going to be January 10th. And there's been a lot of chatter about what's going on. And of course, also just remember that uh, Coinbase is going to be the custodian for essentially all of these institutions, except for Vanek. For some reason, they chose the twins of Gemini, sir, whatever. And uh, that's uh, which way they want to go. So, you know, this could uh, help out with the whole conversation that uh, Gary and the SEC has as far as market manipulation. Now you have a custodian that they have uh, open access to, and they made that very clear. So we've got some good news in, in what's happening behind the scenes. Grayscale executives update investors about uh, the approval. The spot Bitcoin ETF comes about. And they actually met with the SEC. I think everybody knows this. And they also updated their investors and said, look, it's not a question of if this gets approved. It's all really a question of when. And I have to agree with them. It's inevitable. We're inevitable. Crypto is inevitable. It doesn't matter how much government pressure we have. It's really the will of the people. And you can only fight us so long, let's be honest. And then also uh, BlackRock also met directly with the SEC to get everything down on paper and to really move forward. And then there was a little piece that put on by my buddy Simon Dixon where uh, there was an update, looked like the SEC meeting with uh, spot Bitcoin ETF issuers have been voluminous. Lots of people, lots of talk, lots of conversation. Of course, the SEC looks like they really want, maybe the SEC wants this to happen. And the uh, undisclosed SEC source said it's about a 99% approval. And it's going to be all at once, which I think is what it comes down to, is if it's going to be all at once, it's got to be January. Because it's not going to be like they're going to deny ARC and then go for the rest of them. So in all honesty, I take a look at this and I'm like, that's a big win. And uh, that'll be a, a bigger win for Simon Dixon because I have to wear this ridiculous T-shirt, uh, which says I heart Mashinsky. But uh, that is the bet that I made with them. And we'll see if it goes through. I got to tell you, I would uh, I would rather be wrong and rich uh, than <laughs> than right and poor. So I'm rooting for this Bitcoin ETF to come through. But along the way, we're going to face some bumps and the bumps are what we're used to which is the lies, the cheating, and the manipulation. And there's a lot of that going on. One of those being, and I was, I was perusing across some of the old articles, and this one popped up. Uh, Jamie Dimon, JP Morgan, says the crypto rally looks overdone. And I was like, ah, oh, that's cute. But this was actually on three weeks ago. And I thought that was adorable because I'm like, oh, that's another, another person, another individual who kind of just scares people and says, ah, it's not really going to happen. And here's what they said. And of course, there's also the big one, Jim Cramer, roughly in uh, December, said to drop Bitcoin as fast as you can when Bitcoin was, I want to say, 16, 17,000. And of course, now here we are. So eh, it's just another, another case of either they're woefully inept or they're just manipulating. Anyhow, so JP Morgan reiterated that uh, on top of the fact that everything's overdone and then this is just a a bear rally and it's going to it's going to plunge any minute which everybody talks about right now which is fine you know that's that's a that's an opinion but there's this part here where they said they reiterated that the spot bitcoin etfs because that was the narrative is the narrative already exist in canada 
and Europe and have garnered little interest from investors since their launch. And I remember reading this and it kind of bothered me because I thought, well, maybe that's true. Maybe we won't have as much interest as we think we will. And it'll be like a big presentation. And it'll be like a dud. Buy the rumor, sell the news. But this report came out just yesterday. Bitcoin ETFs, 60% surge in Canada signals what's coming in the United States. Now, we can't say that it's exactly going to overlap with what's happening in Canada, but here's what we have. Canada was the world's first spot Bitcoin ETF, and that was in February 2021. AUMs, or Assets Under Management, at the Purpose Bitcoin ETF, the world's largest spot Bitcoin uh, ETF, soared 60%. That's a lot to over 947 million Canadian dollars or 700 million US dollars. Uh, Balchunas, I believe he is uh, one of the uh, individuals that is really uh, uh, dovish or is really uh, bear, uh, bullish for the spot Bitcoin ETF to actually happen. Noted that the US ETF market is 32 times that of Canada. So let me say that one more time. The spot ETF market is 32 times that of Canada's. So, I mean, you can't say that, you know, 700 million times 32 is going to happen, but I'm just saying there's, that's the, that's the thing about um, um, the United States. I know people will say, well, who cares about the United States? Because it's just, it's just one country for Pete's sakes. I'm like, yeah, but there's a ton of cash flowing around in here and you really can't, you can't discredit it. You can't really go against it. If you want to have the most amount of money in the market, this is where it's at. And uh, we can debate, you know, if, if America is a bully or it's bad at times, whatever else, you can't deny the fact we got a load of money. That's really what it comes down to. So this is, uh, again, I think an interesting uh, switcheroo from what JP Morgan will talk about. And they'll say, hey, you know what? There really wasn't a big interest. Now, of course, we see a big 60% uh, bump. And then just to, just to go back on when this was, JP Morgan, this was three weeks ago. Let's just, let's just round off and say about four weeks ago. Is actually three. But if we can take a look back, and you know a lot of people will put, they'll put stock into what JP Morgan says because they're traditional finance. They've been around for quite some time. People, surprisingly, will listen to them. I know it sounds ridiculous to us, but remember, we're a small subset of people. There are a lot of people that take a look at JP Morgan and say, that is the, that is the standard. They've, they're the banks, and of course we trust them, <laughs> which sounds ridiculous. But if we look back 30 days, Bitcoin, which is the which is the highest market cap of all of all the cryptos, that was almost twelve percent. So in thirty days, you would have outperformed the average annual amount of the S and P five hundred in thirty days if you just would listen to S and P, listen to J P Morgan. Ethereum did even better. In thirty days, it did seventeen point seven percent. Binance Coin, okay, well, okay, you got me on this one. <laughs> the BNB Coin didn't do so hot in thirty days; it was down one point two percent. However, I got to tell you. That's not a bad resolution for the American government uh, getting its claws into the organization and essentially forcing the CEO to step down, CZ Binance, and get, getting them on the KYC AML fraud case. And it only goes down 1.2%, which is the token itself. So I got to tell you, in all honesty, that's a pretty strong case for you know what we thought could have been the next black swan also. Solana in 30 days, 54%. Alluvium, of course, now we're getting into crypto gaming, one of my favorites. 30 days is 123%. Immutable X, 107%. Uh, Myria, uh, 30 days was 165%. And of course, uh, playable games in 30 days went up 686.6%. So again, listening to JP Morgan and some of the traditional finance, again, I don't know if it's just straight ineptitude uh, incompetence, or if it's just manipulation. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. I'd love to hear that one. And then also, uh, we actually talked about this. It, there's a website that's 100% free, Dan Teaches Crypto. And if you go to the uh, Module 7 Gaming, and again, it's free. I don't even spam you. I just send you emails if I upload a video. And uh, you know, we've been talking to... The heads of state, the people that know what's going on in Web3, like Johnny Hustle from, from Banter. His top plays were Immutable X, Echelon Prime, Gala, Vulcan Forge. Stash was mostly like Avalanche. Kagi, Alluvium, Immutable, <laughs> Immutable X. Game Swift, which I'd like to get into. 
And then uh, we also had Classy on, and he talked about how Immutable X, Alluvium, Avalanche, Polygon, and Myria were his top picks. And again, this was three months ago. Three months ago. So not too bad. And I actually took his advice, and uh, I picked up a uh, node over on Playable. So if you want to learn more about that, links in the description for the website and for Playable and all that good stuff. But the last thing I will say about this ETF is this. If it works out like I think it is, I mean, if it does get approved, it's like the perfect timing. January 3rd, what is it? January 10th, excuse me, 2024. It's around that time that people are assuming, we're under the pretense that Jerome Powell might actually cut rates. And when he cuts rates, that's really good for money market funds because, I mean, not good for them, but they have to find a home. And BlackRock just put out a report that said, look, in the year that that the Fed cuts rates, historically speaking, the returns are 4.5% or less. So it would behoove you to get out of these money market funds and get into some, some sort of other riskier assets, whatever that may be. It's amazing how BlackRock times that perfectly. And right now, and you can take a look at this on the Fred uh, of St. Louis, you're looking at almost $6 trillion dollars in money market funds looking for a home. And uh, we'll see where that goes. And I gotta tell you, if they're looking for metrics, check this out. Uh, addresses with, with a balance of 0 0.01 Bitcoin or more is at an all time high. We are at 12,522,878. That's an all time high since the inception of Bitcoin with 0 0.01 Bitcoin and people are holding on to it. And then if we take a look at the hash rate, we know how high that's, that's an all time high. It looks like the miners are gearing up for something. I don't know what that could be. And then also, if you take a look at the, the one plus year hodl wave or who has been holding more than a year or so, it is also at an all time high. We're at 70.66%. If we take a look at five years, it's also at an all time high. And if we look at 10 years or people who have held Bitcoin 10 years or longer, guess what? Well, that's normal. That's, it's also at an all time high. So uh, again, if, if this happens the way I hope it does happen with this ETF coming through, you got an ETF coming through. You got a lot of hype happening. You got potentially Fed cut, Fed cutting rates around that time. I know people think that it might be in May, but some people think it might actually be earlier. And you got money market accounts, which have a ton of money just sloshing around going, where should we put this? Hmm. What's this asset that's outperformed everything over the last decade or so? And maybe I should take a look at that because, you know, it's outperformed uh, positively every commodity that's out there, and even my precious gold. So maybe... I could allocate, I don't know, 2 to 2.5%. You get where I'm going with this, right? I don't have to explain it. So uh, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. But there's this thing that bothers me. That's the bullish Rob. Rob's bullish. Rob's happy. Let me play devil's advocate. There's one thing that really concerns me. One thing. And it's this guy. That's Gary. And uh, out of everything that he's talked about, He's talked about how, you know, that uh, the crypto space is essentially hucksters, fraudsters, and scam artists. And yes, he has talked about how that everything is a security except for, for Bitcoin. He alludes the fact on Ethereum. He kind of dances around it, but uh, whatever. But he concerns me. And he concerns me because of the agency that he runs. And this is what's going on. Yesterday or last night, there was a report that came out. Judge scolds the SEC for apparent deception in a crypto case and threatens to sanction the entire agency. And I said, add Gary Gensler. I thought you were supposed to protect us harder, not lie and deceive and get the outcome you wanted. I sure hope you approve the ETF and actually do your job. History will not be kind to you, sir. And when you dig deeper into this, you got John Deaton here. He lays it all out as what happened and why the courts are threatening to sanction the SEC for lying. And apparently this has been going on for three plus years. And you know who took over three plus years ago? Gary Gensler. Here's what we have. Judge Robert Shelby warned the SEC lawyers in the debt box lawsuit. Apparently, I don't know if it's an exchange. I, I, I can't nail it down. Help me in the comment section. But there's a lawsuit the SEC brought against debt box. Lawyers in the debt box lawsuit that he may sanction them, the judge, for convincing a court to freeze the debt box company's assets under false and misleading pretenses. In an attempt to secure a temporary restraining order, the SEC claimed that debt box was closing its accounts 
and moving its funds out of the United States. Basically saying like, look, they're trying to avoid us. Uh, they're trying to get around it and they're closing their accounts and moving them out of the United States so we can't touch it. However, <laughs> the SEC refused to mention that debt boxes accounts were being closed by the banks. They also failed to note that the funds were moved to a credit union and not out of the U.S. Let me say that again. The funds were moved to a credit union in the U.S. and not out of the U.S. Following the SEC's claim, a federal court froze the company's bank accounts in August. Judge Shelby pointed out the SEC's misrepresentation caused debt box irreparable harm and undermined the integrity of the case's proceedings. Hence, the court threatened to sanction the SEC's lawyer in the case. Let's see how long that goes on. But that's very telling. You know the SEC knew that. You knew they understood what was happening. You knew they had the information and they didn't give it to the court. They wanted the win. Because why? Because Gary Teeth's taking L's. That's okay. I cheat too when I keep losing. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but you can't do that against a major company and screw everybody over. And that's kind of like what, what they did with Ripple. Well, let me get in that one. And this is what John says. And this is, it's long, but it's, it's important. I think people know this. He says, I've been saying this for over three years. Three years, the SEC is a corrupt institution. For those of you who don't believe me, I'm wrong, read this. As you read Austin's post, which is, this is one down here, where'd it go? Austin Campbell. Don't fool yourself in believing that this is just one incident. In a non-fraud case, the SEC threatened a bankrupt library, LBRY, long before assuming, and they put them out of business, I might add and then proceeded to do it. The SEC was sued by Empower and got caught in a lie, claiming there were no documents than when there were thousands. SEC lied to Judge Torres, claiming he actually threatened. The SEC told Judge Torres that John Deaton threatened to physically harm the SEC staff and promoted drug use when they asked her to kick me off the Ripple case. Huh, didn't know that. Judge ignored their nonsense and then proceedings to cite the two things I did in her decision. Finding XRP is not a security. An appellate court found the SEC's conduct arbitrary and capricious. I always say that word wrong. In the Voyager bankruptcy, the judge chastised the SEC attorneys for the way they were handling themselves. SEC director misled Warren Davidson under oath. Of course, that is the uh, congressman. I don't want to say Ohio. I always forget. Under oath at a hearing when he said he couldn't answer whether Hinneman's speech was approved by the SEC's ethics office. Because the matter was being litigated, if you don't remember, Hinman came out and said that uh, Ethereum was not a security. That issue actually was not being litigated in any manner. And they knew that. Ripple never even raised the issue. So how could it have been litigated? He lied. SEC lied, misled Congress, and avoided answering the question because he lacks honor. Speaking of honor, the lack thereof, a federal judge wrote a public decision that the SEC attorneys were not only hypocrites, but they lacked faithful allegiance to the law. Where are we living? This is like some dystopian, crazy future where there's corruption at the highest levels. And there it is laid out for you. So when we're talking about this spot ETF and we're like, well, we're, we're hoping on the good faith that they're going to go by the, the information, the facts. I just look at this melon head and I think to myself, man, I don't know if it's going to go through, even though it should. <sighs> and this is what it comes down to. This is actually a, a quote by uh, somebody on, on the thread, He's Alex. And he said, who cares how many cases the SEC loses if they don't face any mi no or minimal sanctions, minimal sanctions as individuals or as an agency? Every SEC lawsuit takes the SEC hours to file and takes its victims years, tens of millions or hundreds of millions to fight. Even when the SEC loses, it wins. And finally... Simon Dixon always says this, follow the money. And I think when I, when I hear about these things and we lay it out like that, I'm very bullish on the ETF, but I won't be surprised if it doesn't get approved. And there's some of the reasons like right here. They don't want you into Bitcoin. They don't want you into crypto. They don't want you to get out of the matrix, out of the, out of the fiat system. Put it in the US government. Put it into dollars. Put it into bonds. Don't put it into Bitcoin. And that's it for today. So look, that went a little bit solemn in the end, sorry, but there's some good news out there. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Now, 
that'll that'll conclude for the news. If you want to uh, talk about it, let's do uh, let's talk, and we'll do a Q and A. I'll answer all your questions, best of my abilities. We'll go from there. So uh, if you got to take off, it's Saturday. Go enjoy the day. It's a beautiful day here in Puerto Rico. I don't know where you're at, but uh, that's it for today. Thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate you.